today in this video we will talk about how to invest money the main focus of this video will be on the thought process that is necessary to practice investment wisely during our teenage days and in our early 20s when we start working in those times our concept about money is very shallow during those days the only thing that we know about money that money can be earned in the form of income or we can spend money so we have a concept of money in terms of income and spending and nothing else but it is also necessary for us to understand that if allowed money can also grow with time how many of us knew during our teenage days or maybe even in our uh, 20s that money makes money yes it is possible if our money is properly invested it can grow with time so this is what is called money making money what we have to do is to we have to invest the money and the balance money takes care of its own it starts to grow but we have to invest it properly so this is the first basic that we should learn about investment of course investment is about money making but here the money making is not derived from the work we do here the money making is more a product of our intelligence is the product of the wise decisions that we take if we are able to invest our money wisely we are actually giving power to our money to grow with time this is what is called money making money now let's understand a small concept about investment most of us do job some of us also do business to earn money so our job or our business gives us that potential to earn money and from that earn money we manage our spendings and we also save a part of our income from the savings that we have made we invest it generally our thought process stops at this stage so our job makes us earn income from income we do savings and from our savings we invest the money so basically our thought process stops after we have started investing money but the basics of the investment starts from here on so what we have in our head is not a closed loop at present so let's close the loop the invested money where does this invested money go this invested money go into our investment portfolio and in that investment portfolio that money starts to grow the more we invest our money the bigger that investment portfolio is become so if you are doing an sip in a mutual fund you are actually contributing each month to your investment portfolio and this investment portfolio in turn is building your wealth so you can see on one side we have a job that is making us earn money on the other hand slowly we are building wealth and over a period of time when the size of our investment portfolio becomes very big when our net worth becomes very big we can say that we have built substantial wealth and this built wealth in turn will generate an alternative source of income for us so now we have two forms of income income one is our salary income and income two is the income that we are deriving from our investment portfolio so there are two parallel cash flows now which is happening now this additional cash flow is now assisting us to manage our spending habits now this flow is very simple it explains this fact that when we are investing we are actually investing to build wealth and this built wealth over time can replace our salary income the income that we derived from doing a business how it is important because you can see the invested money grows on its own we need not do anything at the time of investment we must use our knowledge we must use our intelligence to invest that money and once the money gets invested it grows on its own there is no interference required from our part to make that money grow so as that money grows it also yields some income suppose that built wealth becomes substantially large you can draw some money from there and take care of your spendings this explains this fact that when we are investing money we are investing money to build wealth and this built wealth will eventually supplement our salaried income so whenever you are thinking about investment make sure that in your mind you are thinking that you are investing to build wealth this is the basic concept start from here and you will see that 
it is more often that your invested money stays invested the main problem with us is that we do invest money a lot of us invest money we do a lot of sips we also buy stocks but does it stay in our investment portfolio today we invest that money and tomorrow we redeem it we sell it to buy something that we should have actually bought from our income not by selling our investments so when we are investing money it should remain in our investment portfolio because it is meant to build wealth it is not meant to buy mobile phones or televisions or cars for ourselves it is for wealth building so when you have this close loop in your head that why you are investing money that money is most probably going to stay invested you are not going to redeem it when we are talking about investment it is very essential to understand that there are two types of assets we can broadly categorize these assets into two types first is the risk free assets and second are the risky assets so these risk free assets are such assets whose yield is constant it's very predictable so if you are buying a bank deposit if you are buying a bank's fixed deposit you know that if it has offered a 6% rate of return it will provide that. but if you are buying a stock you are not sure what kind of return it is going to yield in times to come it may not yield some returns maybe your capital goes into a loss so this is the difference between a risk free asset and a risky asset a risk free asset is a bank deposit where your earning is almost confirmed and in the risky asset you are not sure that what will be the size of your return moreover there is also a chance that instead of making profits your capital is eroding so this is the risk that's why they are called risky assets so whenever we are investing money we should always remember these two asset types and how to handle these two asset types we will talk about now so if we are investing in a risk free asset go ahead buy it at any available price if you are buying a bond if you are buying a debt fund if you are buying a bank deposit at whatever market price it is available buy it because it is going to give the returns that it is promising so we can buy a risk free asset at its market price no analysis required go ahead buy it and keep it in your investment portfolio but if we are buying a risky asset like a equity mutual fund or stocks in particular i will also include gold and real estate as a part of a risky asset so whenever we are buying a risky asset it is always necessary to check its price what we should check there we should check that if the current price the available price at which we can buy that asset if that price is overvalued or undervalued we must always buy a risky asset at an undervalued price if it is overvalued avoid it if it is undervalued only then we can buy that asset and include it in our investment portfolio so this is our lesson number 2 in the lesson number 1 what we learned that when we are investing we are investing for wealth building and in this step we are learning that what type of assets we should include in the investment portfolio either we include a, a risk free asset we can buy it at a market price or if we are buying a risky asset we should always buy it under valued so why at all to buy a risky asset because these risky assets if bought at undervalued price can yield very high returns so if we are buying a risky asset at an undervalued price and it is yielding a very high return it means that the compounding the growth rate that we will get in our investment portfolio will be high suppose you have invested some money in investment portfolio and you want to reach the value of 5 crores in some time so if you are buying a risky asset and at undervalued price because that asset grows very fast the time period that you will take to reach that 5 crore landmark will be much faster we discussed that we are investing money to build wealth that's true but building wealth sounds a very vague purpose right what it means by building wealth so in order to remove this vagueness what we should do that we should practice goal based investing suppose your purpose is to buy a nice house for yourself 7 years from today so tell yourself that the purpose of investment 
is to build wealth to buy a house seven years from now so this kind of purpose will motivate you to keep your money invested and also to invest more because you are doing it for a personal goal imagine telling yourself that i am building wealth to achieve financial independence 30 years from now will it not be more effective than to simply saying that i am building wealth i am investing to build wealth no i am investing money to build wealth to achieve financial independence in next 30 years similarly tell yourself that i am building wealth for my child's future prospects and i will need this money 15 years from now so this makes this whole wealth building process more personalized and more specific this is what is called goal based investing so whenever we are investing money it is absolutely important that we should practice goal based investing i will also tell you the preconditions that we should have before we start to invest generally people start investing very randomly they have some spare money and they think that okay okay uh, let's not keep this money uh, in our savings account let's invest it but there are some preconditions that we should follow if you want to build a substantially large investment portfolio it is very essential to follow these preconditions these preconditions are those checkpoints that unless and until these are checked we should not go ahead and start investing our money so what are those checkpoints the first checkpoint is you should have enough emergency cash so in your emergency cash fund you must have at least six months worth of your monthly expense if your monthly expense is one lakh rupees you must have at least six lakhs rupees parked in your emergency cash fund the second is you must be sufficiently insured first is you must buy a health insurance policy what should be the size of your health cover it should be at least 50 percent of your annual income if your annual income is let's say 30 lakh rupees then you should have a cover of at least 15 lakh rupees. you should also buy a life insurance policy preferably buy a term insurance plan don't buy an endowment plan the cover of this life insurance should be at least 10 times your annual income if your annual income is 30 lakh rupees then 10 times of your annual income will be 3 crores so you should have a life cover of 3 crores if your annual income is 30 lakhs and you should also have your vehicles sufficiently insured the third is you should bring your debt as low as possible for a person like me becoming debt free before going all out investing out my money is paramount i would want to become debt free and then i would invest my money because i find it very foolish that on one hand i'm reeling under debt on other hand i'm investing my money so for a person like me becoming debt free and then investing makes more sense but i know a lot of people will not agree with this uh, line of thought so for them i will give them a thumb rule suppose you have multiple loans in your name add emis of all those loans the emis the total emis of all these loans should be less than 30 percent of your monthly take-home salary and when i say monthly take-home salary it is that amount that gets credited into your bank account each and every month after all the deductions suppose after all the deductions the money that comes into your bank account let's say it's one lakh rupees then your monthly emis of all those loans should be less than thirty thousand rupees you can say that you are not too leveraged so once all these three conditions are met go ahead and start investing all out in this video what we have discussed is how to invest money from the perspective of building a right thought process have a right thought process build your foundations of investment in this way and then go ahead and start buying mutual funds stocks or anything if you like this video please share it with your friends and please do subscribe to my youtube channel thank you very much for watching